Minecraft Live 2022 is just wrapped up, and I want to say that there was a lot, but it only really felt that way because the show was moving as slowly as any typical anime does. But there is definitely stuff to talk about. There's a new creator tool for designing your own mobs in Minecraft. We got new information on Minecraft Legends. We got a look at upcoming features to Minecraft Dungeons. But let's be real, there's only one thing we all truly care about, and that thing is the announcement of the next Minecraft update. Normally, They'll announce the update name and show off some of its features, but this year was a little different. As we all know, one of the biggest issues that a lot of people have with Mojang is that sometimes they might announce more than they can add, which can cause expectations to be subverted. And this is something I addressed in one of my previous videos, check it out if you have the chance. But thankfully, Mojang has been made aware of these complaints. So what they've done this year is that they only showed off features that are far into developments that they can actually promise, and so that way, we have a lot more exciting stuff to look forward to. But that's not all, because this year, Mojang pulled a very unexpected wildcard. You could probably tell this already by just looking at the title and thumbnail, but they didn't announce the name of the update. So as of recording this, this update is still only known as the 1.20 update. The update will eventually have a name, and it seems that they're going to let us decide the name of the update, similar to how we decided the names for the Ravager and Hoglin mobs. I think this is actually a good idea, because something as simple as the name of the update can raise expectations, and this was made quite clear with the wild updates, and there are even some other examples of this like the exploration updates. That being said, they give us some sort of idea on what this update is about, and it seems that what they're doing with this update is kind of similar to what Terraria did with the 1.4 Journey's End update. Basically, they're expanding on older features, kind of like what they've been doing in previous updates, but this time around, they're basically just hitting the randomize button, but anyways, let's actually talk about the features that were shown off. So first off, they announced more default skins, so now it's no longer just Steve and Alex. But let's be real, nobody's gonna notice an actual difference. Maybe, I don't know. But now for actual features within the game, the first thing they showed off are hanging signs. The name gives it all away. They're signs that will connect to blocks, either next to or below. It's a pretty small feature, but at the same time it's quite big. It adds a lot more building possibilities, and that's really cool. The second thing they showed off is a surprising new wood type, bamboo wood. This was definitely something I did not expect, but I'm all for it. New wood types are always welcome. You can make the same stuff with this wood type that you can with other woods, but unlike other woods, it has a more unique design, and there's even a special block that you can make with it that you can't make for other woods. And unlike other woods, instead of being able to make a boat, you can make a raft which is definitely interesting. The third thing they showed off are chisel bookshelves. They're like normal bookshelves, except they're not. Normal bookshelves exist for nothing but decoration, but these bookshelves are a storage block that you can place actual books in, which is really cool. And these can include normal books, enchanted books, and book and quill. Not only that, but you can use them with redstone, which means you can do that trope where you move a certain book and it opens up a secret passage, which is definitely awesome. The fourth and final thing they showed off are camels. Yes, you heard that right. Now to be honest, I was expecting Olraf was going to announce archaeology, since he's the mastermind behind it, but this is still pretty interesting. Obviously, camels will spawn in deserts, and they'll either wander around carelessly, or they'll be laying on the ground, and they basically work the way you would expect. You can breed them using cacti, and you can mount them and travel around wherever, they work kind of like horses, but unlike horses, they're a lot slower, and they come with some unique functions. They have a special dash move which you can use to easily move across rivers and ravines, and two people can ride on them at once, which is definitely neat. And to add on to that, the person on the back can attack mobs while the one in the front does all the riding. And yeah, that's about all they showed off. Overall, I think all these features are pretty nice in their own ways, and I don't have any real complaints. I know some of you might think this seems underwhelming, but remember what I said earlier? All this means is that there's a lot more to this update that they haven't shown off yet that we can look forward to. Now normally, the wait time for snapshots depends. For the Nether and Wild updates, we had to wait until early next year to see snapshots, and that was probably because there were other updates that were being worked on. And for Village and Pillage and Caves and Cliffs, the snapshots first began roughly a month after their announcements, which was probably because there was nothing else being worked on at that time. This time is a similar case, however it was actually announced that the first snapshots for this update will be releasing in only a few days, 
so we could see the first snapshot for this update as early as this upcoming Wednesday, so that definitely makes up for the small amount of what was shown off. This might also mean that the snapshot cycle will be slower like it was during Caves and Cliffs. But oh well, there is still a lot to look forward to. Now there is one final thing to discuss, and that is the mob vote. Not surprisingly, the winner this year was the Sniffer. I voted for the Rascal, but I'm fine with any of the three mobs. I actually expected the Rascal to be the first to go, so when the tough Golem was taken out of the game, I was definitely surprised, and that gave me a little bit of hope that maybe the Rascal has a chance, but it didn't really mean anything. There is actually some benefit to the Sniffer winning. You may have noticed this, or maybe not, but there hasn't been a single year where the first choice actually won. Heck, the first choice has always been the first to go, so seeing the first choice win this year is definitely a nice mix of things. But yeah, the Sniffer is the winner, so we'll be seeing it as a part of the 1.20 update. When it will be added? Well, probably early next year is my guess. So that's everything that was announced in Minecraft Live this year. So far this update looks interesting, and I'm excited to see what else they have going on. I made a theory video discussing what the theme will be, and even though they haven't revealed the theme of the update, I think it's pretty obvious it won't be an end update. Another guess I had was an archaeology update, but I think it was said by Kimmy Dogs on Twitter that this update will have nothing to do with Caves and Cliffs, so that might be unlikely. If I had to give this update a name, it would be the How Time Flies By update. And no, I didn't steal that from a fake leak. Totally original idea. But if you have any guesses on what this update should be called, comment down below. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. And if you want to see more stuff from me, like and subscribe, and turn on the bell to be notified when I upload a new video, I would very much appreciate it. Alright, now get out.